previously on Create, Launch, Monetize podcast. All of those things are what the brands that are most successful in the world understand about their customers. And in most cases, they exercise what they understand to use it in their marketing, to use it in the whole entire relationship the brand has with the customer. Right. Yeah, that's a good way to do it. So We're really not... going at the market research angle, it's like, what are they saying? What are they thinking? What are they feeling? What are people around them saying? These are all things that will help you discover what they care about, what they need, what are their pain points, what do they want, mm -hmm. and what they need are two different things. Eben Pagan says you got to hide the medicine in the meat. Welcome to the Create, Launch, and Monetize podcast, where we show you step-by-step -step how to create programs, products, and services, podcasts, and businesses from scratch, launching them and monetizing them. You become the crown's authority in your category, Think about this show as a lifeboat for your business in this ever-changing digital age that allows you to grow at rapid speed to navigate the open waters of the current industry. When you leverage the CLM strategy for your business, podcast, book, or service, you will be recognized as the go-to leader. My name is Anthony Frank, world-renowned marketer, and with me is TEDx speaker and coach, business positioning strategist, and podcast host, Sean Douglas. Hey guys, we're excited to have you here with us to break away from all the noise, stand out, and know for sure that what you will execute will have lasting long-term results. There is so much fluff, so many different strategies, so many different paths to take. How do you know the one is the right path? Well, it always seems that someone else's strategy is amazing and they make millions while you constantly go over your notes from the tens of hundreds of webinars only to not earn revenue, not retain clients and stay broke. Now you don't have to. In a tactical way, Anthony and I, with military level accountability, will take you along the ride on the journey of our own creation, launch, and monetization of our assets and our businesses. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Create, Launch, Monetize podcast. It's an honor to be here with you. I'm Sean Douglas. And in this episode, I have a very special treat for you. I was asked to speak at an event called Outliers Podcast Festival in St. George back in 2018. Got asked back again in 2019. And my talk was about the little known hacks that podcasters can use to market their show. And in this episode, I'm going to give you the keynote to that conference. Here is the little known hacks that podcasters can use to market their show. What I want to talk about is the little known hacks that you can use to market and repurpose your show. So raise your hand. If you have a show currently, you have a show, raise your hand. Al standing, put them down. Raise your hand. If you do not have a show, but you guest on podcast, raise your hand. Outstanding. Who's not going to raise their hand no matter what I say? Oh, there's always a couple. Perfect. What I'm going to talk to you about are things that people are not using that need to be used and are there. They just don't know about them. I've interviewed so many people and they just don't know that this is possible. Who here, raise your hand, is an author. You have a book. Outstanding. Keep them up. You have a book. Now, put your hand down. Not yet. Put your hand down if you do not have a podcast. You do not have a podcast. So everybody with their hands up has a book and has a podcast. Is your podcast on Amazon? Everybody's going to be weird. Here's your first hack. Author Central page on Amazon allows you to have a blog. An RSS feed on Amazon does not, deter, does not discern between a podcast RSS feed and a, and a blog RSS feed. Amazon doesn't, doesn't distinguish between the two. So if you're an author and you do not have your show on Amazon, here's how you do it. You go to your author central page and in the top column, it says name, whatever information, blog, click on blog. On the bottom, it says RSS feed. Take your show's RSS feed, put it into Amazon. And then every time someone clicks on your book, it goes to your author central page. What do they see on your author central page? Every single episode of your show. I took it off 
I lost 240 downloads. I put it back on, ran it for seven days. I gained 302 downloads. I left it off for two weeks. I was hovering. I was literally hovering, not gaining any more subscribers, not getting any more downloads. I put it back on Author Central, immediately gained another 400 downloads immediately that day. So I know that is a direct result. If you are an author and your show is not on Amazon, go to your Author Central page, take your RSS feed, put it into the blog, and I guarantee you, your show will start to get more, uh, more downloads, more looks, because when they click on it, that's what happens. Also, uh, have you ever heard of repurpose.io? Anybody heard of that? Repurpose.io. Raise your hand if you have not heard of repurpose.io. Outstanding. HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash repurpose.io. What this does is it automatically, and I paid $297 for the entire year, one time. What it does is it automatically repurposes your Facebook Lives and your show over to YouTube automatically, one time setup. So I do a lot of Facebook Lives. I'm Facebook Live in this right now. And I Facebook Live content. I create four pieces of content every day between Facebook, LinkedIn, and um, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram, and then on Google My Business, which I'll get into in a minute. What I do is I create four pieces of content every single day, which I'm trying to get 10,000 pieces of content every year. A lot of that is Facebook Lives. So now I'm taking my Facebook Lives and I'm repurposing them automatically onto YouTube so they can get it both ways. I go into YouTube, make my hashtags, clean it up a little bit, boom, I'm done. But it's one thing I don't have to worry about. If you're not repurposing your Facebook Lives onto other channels, right? So if you do a show and you do a Zoom and your show is part of that, you can actually put that on YouTube as well. What it does on YouTube is no one's gonna go to YouTube to really like listen to your show, but what it does is if you create those hashtags, and hashtags are huge. If you create those hashtags about your show, put them on YouTube in the description. It should say hashtag podcast, hashtag whatever your show is, life transformation radio, hashtag transformation, hashtag addiction, hashtag whatever, in the description of YouTube, and then write out, or in the uh, title, and then write out very little what your title is on your show. Then in the description, put all of the show notes or whatever you want in there, you get a higher reach. I've tested this time and time again and it works. Yes. I was taking notes. Can you repeat that part on title and hashtag? So YouTube video, the last one. So I literally just had on Thursday, I had Brett Michaels. Everybody who Brett Michaels is love Brett Michaels. <laughs> love Brett Michaels. I love eighties hair bands. I had Brett Michaels guitarist on my show. So what I did was I created like hashtag guitarist, hashtag musician, hashtag Brett Michaels, hashtag Peter Evick. Hashtag transformation, hashtag entrepreneur, like all these hashtags inside of the title of the YouTube video, then said Brett Michaels guitarist on Life Transformation Radio. That's the whole thing. It only gives you a little bit of room, but if you can maximize short title hashtags, right? In the description was my show note. So I just gotta go clean up because repurpose automatically does it. I just gotta clean it up a little bit. Same thing with Facebook Lives. Your Facebook Lives automatically get transferred over to YouTube. You go to YouTube, find your live, clean it up a little bit the way that you want it, and you're good to go, all right? So I was talking about Google My Business. There's an app called Google My Business. If you are not on Google My Business, you're missing out. If you go to the whatever app store you use and you go to Google My Business, there's a little store with a big G on it. Use it as a social media. Every time I post on Facebook, LinkedIn, and I post on Instagram, I then go to Google My Business and the same post goes there as well. If you go and Google my show or Google my, my business, the success core, you will see a ton of posts on there. And so I, Sean Douglas, compete with Sean Douglas, who is Michael Keaton's son, who is on IMDb, who is in movies, who is a singer songwriter. I have zero SEO against this guy. And if you use my middle name, Shawn Michael Douglas, then I compete with Michael Douglas. And Shawn Michaels, the 80s wrestler. So my SEO is screwed. So what I did was I go to Google My Business and I start using the hashtags, I start using the posts, I start using my name, and I am getting on the number one page of Google. 
just by doing that because I'm posting on Google like it's a social media. So if you don't have the Google My Business app, get the Google My Business app. Set it up for your show, set it up for your business, and then start posting there because all of your posts go directly to Google. And if you're not dominating on page one, you're not dominating anywhere. One other thing that I really want to talk to you about is LinkedIn organic reach. So we talked about headliner. He brought it up headliner. If you haven't used headliner, it's incredible. I'm going to give you a two for one. Who does video? Raise your hand. Who does video? Outstanding. Have you ever seen the videos that have the header and the footer on the bottom? Do you want to know how to do that for as little to no effort and as cheap as possible? Okay. Yeah. Go to HTTPS colon forward slash, forward slash, it, it matters. Rapper, W-R-A-P-R, W-R-A-P-R.com. For $47 for a one-time fee, you can actually take your video, put it into Video Rapper. It already has custom created headlines for you, or you can create one. So what you do is you take that, maybe that Zoom call, maybe that whatever you want it to be, a Facebook Live. I do all my videos, if you look at my social media, all my videos, I'll maybe put out a 20 minute video, maybe a 10 minute video, like this will come out, the whole thing. Then what I'll do is I'll cut it into different pieces. So this one content right here is gonna get chopped up probably four or five times. So maybe I'll do, here's what you do if you're an author. That's one piece of content. Here's what you do on video wrapper, one piece of content. So I'll create four or five pieces of content. I'll cut it in a video editor, upload it into video wrapper. Then you take the video wrapper and it has the header and footer or it has just a header. You can customize it. You take that and you upload it into LinkedIn. You're instantly crushing it because LinkedIn organic reach with video is getting the most amount of reach out of any post long form, pictures, it doesn't matter. It's absolutely crushing. So if you're not on LinkedIn, you're failing. Yes, ma'am. W-R-A-P-R.com. Is that what everybody's got? Yeah. It's not working? W -R -A -P -R. No. no. A-P-R. W-R-A-P-R.com. Thank you. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. So if you're a speaker, if you're doing any live video, cut and chop the video, put it in a video wrapper. It's literally a one-time fee, $47. I'm not an affiliate or anything, so I'm not getting no money from this. It's just what I use. All right. So we talked about headliner. Video wrappers transcribing sucks. It's absolutely horrendous. So what I do is I take that video that I just created, which literally takes you all of like four minutes. Like literally I can do it in about four minutes. You take that and you put it into headliner.app, which is HTTPS before it. You take the headliner and you put it into the transcribing software and then you can transcribe it right there. And now you have a fully professionally done video wrapped transcribed video. And everybody knows, especially the gentlemen in the room that you know, you're watching transcribed videos on silent while dropping deuces. So everybody transcribe your videos. Yes, transcribe your videos because everybody is watching 80% of content right now is consumed through video. 80%. If you're not transcribing your videos, then they have to watch them. Then they have to find a time to watch them. And most videos are, are watched on mute, listening or watching the transcribes. So you have to transcribe your videos. Everybody tracking? Yeah. Perfect. I love it. Any questions before I go to the next thing? Yes. What's the best way to uh, get people who are watching that mm -hmm. to whatever destination on the internet you want them to then go to? Love it. That was going to be my next thing. So he wants to know once they've watched the video, how do I get that call to action to get them to my show? All right? Okay. So what I do and what I've seen other people do and what really works is not only having in the post, like click here or do this or whatever. So Facebook and social media is you don't want to put your link inside of the post. You need to put it in the comment. So if you're putting your post with a link, your engagement is getting crushed. Put it inside the comment section in the link, in the first link, in the first comment, put, you know, click this link, you know, whatever 
inside the video, you can actually piece together a link tree. You ever heard of link tree? They just talked about link tree. There's also one called link fire. What I use is link fire. Link fire is what Gary Vaynerchuk uses. If Gary Vaynerchuk's using it, I'm, I'm freaking using it. So what it does is it gives you a list of all of the places where you can find your show and you post that right into the video. And so you cut the video to piece that in. It actually gives you an area to piece that in. It's a lot of tech stuff. I promise you three times you use it, you're done. You got it. It's super, super simple because I'm not a tech dude. I hire people for tech. I can do this. So link tree, link fire is huge. No, I am not scheduling it through Buffer or any of that because social medias are, are killing, absolutely killing the engagement. But what I am doing is called a dollar a day for seven days. So what I do is I take that headliner video that I just transcribed with the video wrapper and I run a dollar a day ad on Facebook for seven days. Literally one dollar a day for seven days. I got 2000 traffic to my, to my show by running a dollar a day for seven days. And I run it on the first week and the third week of the month. So I literally spent $14 a month in ad spend. And I got literally every week, it's like 1800, 2,500. The most I've had was 26, 24 to my website, viewing my, viewing my show. You run a dollar a day for seven day Facebook ads targeting the interests of the people on your show. So if I had Chris on my show, I would, I would target people who go to events, who are in podcasts, who are in media, who are like the interests that we're talking about on the show. That's who I would have. If I had, if I had him on the show, I would talk, be talking about trips or travel or, you know, the podcast or what, like whatever it is, the interest and you want to get your target market so small, it's got to be so small, right? Then inside the ad, it gives you a place to go. Send them to Apple iTunes, send them to your email, send them to your website, send them to a newsletter, send, wherever you want them to go. That's the destination. Literally, I run a dollar a day for seven days, Facebook ad, and I get no, like the lowest I've had is 1800 people going to my website to view my show on my website. Facebook, yes, because I have a page for Life Transformation Radio and I have a group and I run the ads right from Life Transformation Radio. Yep, right from your page. Your ads manager is on the left column, down on the left column on your main Facebook page that you see your profile. Ads manager, click your career ad and then dollar a day for seven days. Yep. Is it converting because of all the other things you're doing? Um, like with rapper and with having video, things like that. What's essential about that? Yeah. So why is it converting? He asked, why is it getting so, why is it converting? Why? Because most people, when they run an ad, it's $20 a day for two days, $20 a day for one day. It's literally going for seven days. They see it all the time, but I've also piqued the interest. Like if you have an interest in podcasts, I'm targeting you. And then what I do is the first week I run the episode. The third week I pixel them because I already went to my website. I retarget them and pixel them through the Facebook ad because I have a pixel on my website. So the first week is getting them to my website. The third week is retargeting them to my website. I've literally made more money this year than, than I ever have. I've talked to more people. I've gained bigger email lists. Like everything has been exponentially growing because of these strategies. Yes. So my intention is to one market my show and get them to know that life transformation radio happens. And then secondly, get them to, to know, like, and trust me because I'm retargeting them every time. And so I just keep seeing this guy. I literally got a Facebook message the other day. Like I keep seeing your, we're not friends on Facebook. I keep seeing your stuff everywhere. I'm like, that's awesome. What can I do for you? Every time somebody messages me, I'm like, that's awesome. What can I do to support you or serve you in what you're doing? That's my only question. Oh, well, I just, I was curious about podcasts or I don't know. And I have a lot of podcast friends. So if they want to do something that I'm not capable of doing, I'm like, oh, well, go talk to Jeremy Slate. And then I go refer people to Jeremy Slate or I'm like, oh, go talk to, go talk to Chris or go talk to like, I push people to where they need to go. Right? So 
I want to have conversations with people because I want to cultivate the know, like, and trust factor and build relationships with people. Because once they build a relationship with people, then they refer out to the show. Which brings me to my next point. Are you, so for, for whoever who has a business, if you have a business and a podcast, raise your hand. Keep them up. Do you have a referral or a loyalty program? Outstanding. You're like, yeah, like empathetically, like, yes. I pay out $100 every time someone refers someone to me and we do business. And I get a lot of business. It incentivizes people. It's really what it does. It incentivizes people. You need a referral program. So I cultivate the relationships with people. They refer me, I refer out, and then we start building relationships. The more relationships you build, the stronger your network, and the more recognized you become. All right? One last thing with the headliner and the video and everything. Let's say that we did an episode today. 30 days later, I redo the same thing I just did 30 days later because people don't download and listen that day. And maybe they, they, maybe they forget, maybe they mess up. Maybe like, oh yeah, I was supposed to do that. I am. So I redo everything I just did exactly 30 days. So today is May, whatever day it is. In 30 days, if I did an episode today, I would redo the same thing with that video. And video is what's crushing right now, video. It sucks because I'm an audio only podcast, so I have to get really creative. So if you were to use a service like Lumen5, Lumen, L-U-M-E-N, number five, it is a slideshow video creation software for free. L-U-M-E-N and then the number five, dot com. Lumen5 is a, is a slideshow video creation software for free. If you're not tech savvy, this is for you. It's literally click, drop, type. It's done. So you can create video slides of what you're doing. Lumen5 video? Lumen5.com. Oh, that's Yeah. How much time I got? Anybody give me time? <laughs> Everybody's like, <sighs> all right. I got, I got two more things. Well, I'll do one more and then I'll do Q&A. All right. This is my... This is my big one. This is the finale. This is something that nobody's doing. I'd love to know if you're doing this. I'd love to know if you're doing this. Okay. I love RSS feeds. Who has MailChimp, Active Campaign, or Constant Contact? Raise your hand. Outstanding. Raise your hand if you have a show and you're using those things. Outstanding. Are you running an RSS feed email campaign? Does anybody know what that is? These allow you to have your RSS feed created into a template and then sent out to your email list every single time an episode is uploaded. Every time you upload an episode, your RSS feed is triggered. So inside of these, you have an RSS feed email campaign. What happens is, is your email list will get an email that you've already templated it out, already set, like, like he had up there. This is the show, this is what we talked about. You can see it here, here, and here, here. Then, the RSS feed, like we don't see electricity running through wires, but inside of that RSS feed, you can't see the code that's running through the RSS feed. So what happens is that code inside of the RSS feed specific to your episode is getting uploaded to Apple iTunes and Google and all the other places. It's dropping the content inside of the email and then putting that email into your email subscribers. So if you're not running an RSS feed email campaign, a one-time setup where you then send it to your email address or your email list with everybody watching and downloading and like fail. I just blew everybody's mind. Yeah. Everybody's like, wait, what? So you, you're recommending when this happens, then it's being dripped out in real time. So you publish it on Tuesday at whatever time it's going to go out that way, that week or whatever. What, why would you recommend that versus developing out an actual funnel or flow? And maybe it's a little bit different. Because I hate funnels. <laughs> Mark Crandall. I hate funnels. I love automation. If I can set it up one time and it just goes out, I'm done. I don't have to do anything else. I set it up one time, I can set it and forget it. And then I subscribe to my own email list. Has everybody subscribed to their own email list? I sure hope so. So I'll see it and I'm like, ooh, yeah, that looks good, got it. And so if something doesn't happen, I'm like, oh crap, gotta go fix it. So when that email comes out, because I do live show, 
So what's great is I do a live show on Blog Talk Radio. It's then live in like 15 minutes, but the RSS feed doesn't trigger until like 5.30, 6 o'clock because I do it at like 11 or 12. Once I get a Google Play, because I subscribe to my own show, once I get a Google Play notification, then I know that I'm going to get an email in about five minutes and ding, there's my email and I'm like, cool, got it. So once my RSS feed goes to Apple iTunes, Google Play, TuneIn, everything else, then the email comes and it's automatic. One last thing and I'll do, I'll do Q&A. If your show is not on TuneIn, and I said this yesterday, if your show is not on TuneIn, get it on TuneIn because Alexa pulls from TuneIn. And so if you want to, you know, Google Voice and all that stuff, uh, Alexa, get your show on TuneIn because that's where Alexa pulls from. All right, so I'll do some Q&A. Yes. Okay, two things. The Amazon RSS feed, I have right now pinned to my blog. Can you do two RSS No. Yes. And I would, I would do your show. Or, or inside of your blog, put links to your show. Then you, then you can double dip. Has it helped? It just started doing last week. It, it's, it, it kind of makes me laugh because we're, Google, we all know, is like king, right? Right. So <clears throat> we're not adding content. I'm curious how long you've been doing it and like what is, what's your strategy that you just put anything you post on starts to be posting or what? So my content marketing strategy is I post at 8 a.m., noon, 4 p.m., and 8 p.m. Every day at 8 a.m. is something about resilience because I speak on resilience. Every day at noon, I speak on either podcast or business. Every day at 4 p.m., I talk about something about the speaker industry. Like I'll drop like mad value. Like I just dropped a directory of 35,000 associations that are booking speakers this year. So I drop that in my post. And then at 8 p.m., I do a wrap up and, and answer some questions. Oh, I got a question about this one thing. Oh, okay, anyway. Um, Where are you um, doing that, Facebook? Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, those three. And then Google My Business, the fourth. Got it. So I post on, I post on, because every Sunday night, I'm already writing my content. Literally when I post, it's copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, because I've already written the content on Sunday night. I've got a week's worth of content already written. Like tomorrow when I go home, I'm going to write out the next week of content. So it's already done. So I know copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. I'm done. That's how I got around like buffer and all that stuff. Just write your content all one day, write your whole entire week's worth of content. All right. Most people spontaneously post. So your algorithm isn't favored because you're not posting in consistency. When you post consistently at the same time every day, Monday through Friday, you're favored by the algorithm. So if you're not getting engagement and people aren't seeing your post because you're not posting consistently at the same time every single day. So I post on my Facebook profile. I post on my two pages and then I post in my one group. That's Facebook. And then I post on LinkedIn and I post on Instagram. That's it. I don't use Twitter. I just, I have, I have, um, I have a medical condition. What? I have a medical condition called ADOS, which is attention deficit. O squirrel. I do not need another profile. <laughs> I do not need another social media. So, and I literally spend little to no time. It's copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. And then I'm in groups and I'm in, if I'm on social media, I'm either in a group answering questions or watching cat videos. I don't know. But like, I read out all my content. If you want to know a great tool to write out content, anybody want to know a great tool to write out content? I'm about to blow your mind. Do this right now. Go to answer. Answer the public.com. This would be huge for you, dude. Holy crap, this would be huge for you. Yes. Yep. I learned that from you. I don't want to do a VA. <laughs> what do you say about Linktree and Linkfire in the middle of your video? So I just post, like, if you want to follow me on social media, you have all your links. If you want to listen to my show, it's on Apple, iTunes, uh, Apple, iTunes, Google, Stitcher, Spotify, um, iHeartRadio. Like, it's got all the links right there. And you say, go here, and you can have all the links right there. In, but do you put that in the video? I put it in the video, and then I put it in the comment. Okay. So answer the public.com 
go there and then inside of the search bar, type in whatever you're, you're amazing at podcast events, whatever it is that you're amazing at, it'll give you all of the questions that the world is asking. Literally content creation done. Answer the public.com. I literally have three weeks worth of content already written, ready to go. All I do is copy and paste it into my social medias. I'm done. All right. Questions. I'm done. Nope. Nope, because social media crushes the engagement. I stopped all that. I literally tested it too. For a week straight, I was like, link, comment. Great engagement. Same thing, link in the post, zero engagement. I tried Buffer and Hootsuite, zero engagement. Posted the same thing a week later, huge engagement. I've tested this over and over again. It just, you have to organically post. Yes, we had a question over here. Nobody. Yeah, so she's like, do I use Buffer? Do I use Hootsuite, third-party poster? No, because social media crushes your engagement. It won't, let, it won't let the post reach the people that need to post because social media wants you to real-time post on social media because it's social, not let me post from behind the scenes. Now, I do schedule my posts inside of my group because you can do that. Um, those are already scheduled like weeks out because it's Facebook's tool. Anything else? Anything else? Thank you for being an amazing audience. Give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> hey, everybody. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe to Create, Launch, Monetize Podcast and your favorite podcast platform. Be sure to join us every single week so that you do not miss any of our conversations and the straight fire and value that we will drop on this show.